Hey everyone, today I'm going to walk through a simple example of how to use the HTML iframe element and send data back and forth between the element and your page code. If you're watching this video, you've likely reached a point where you need to extend the capability of your Velo site outside of what's provided through the APIs. This is where HTML elements can help you. To show you how this works and how this iframe element communicates back and forth with your Velo page code, I'm going to set up a simple example using leaflet.js, which is a third party mapping library. We're going to allow your users to search for and save a location that they can then send to the page code. To get started, let's take a quick look at leaflet.js. This is an open source JavaScript library for creating maps. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining how the code works because I'm actually just going to be using their boilerplate code in this example. I'll also be extending the functionality of the map with a plugin that will allow the user to search for a location. Again, it will be using the boilerplate code, so I won't be spending too much time explaining how to use it. But if you're interested, you can go to Leaflet's documentation and play around yourself. To set up your editor, if you're following along, you're going to want to add an HTML component. You can really make this any size you want. I like it to span this entire area. You're going to want to add a button called Save My Location and a little text value that is going to display to the user what the latitude and longitude that they are saving is going to be. We are going to hide this on load and populate it when we get the message back from the HTML element. When working in the HTML element, I highly recommend using a code editor. It's very difficult to write code in the HTML element. It's really better suited for copy and pasting code that you've already written. In addition to this, if you work with other people that have access to your sites, access to these elements, it's a good practice to have the code that you're going to put in that HTML element saved somewhere else, whether it's a repo, locally, whatever the places that you usually store your code, create that file and save the code there that you want to use just to be ready for any disaster that might happen and also to make it a little easier to write the code before you put it in the element. As you'll see, I've already added the leaflet code. Very briefly, what's going on here is this is the out of the box quick start code. It's leaflets, CSS and JavaScript that is required to create this map. The other CSS that you'll see, and we'll talk about a little later in this example, is the geocoder control. This is the plugin I was referring to earlier that's going to allow our users to search. To instantiate the map, you're going to want to create script tags so that your iframe knows that you're dealing with JavaScript now. And again, this is the boilerplate code. It comes with a latitude and longitude out of the box that you can set to whatever center you want. This is setting, setting the center and the zoom of the map. This is giving the attribution to the tiles that we're using, in this case being OpenStreetMap. It's giving a max zoom so the users um, are restricted in that. This line here is the geocoder that is going to add searching capabilities to the map. So when you're writing your script out, you can just grab the whole thing and copy it and go right back into your HTML element here. All you're going to do is add your code. Notice you can also add a whole website address here. We're not going to cover that today, but it is an option. Control V, paste that code in here. You can update that. And now you'll see in your preview here that we have the map loaded. Let's go ahead and click publish. So this is an iframe. This is loaded in an iframe. It's completely separate from your Velo page code. This is the plugin I was speaking of. It will allow me to go check out my city if I want to. Gives us some options here and switches me over to Baltimore, Maryland with a little pop-up and a map center right on the city of Baltimore. Back in the editor, notice we don't have any page code at all yet. This code all exists within the iframe and right now doesn't interact with your Velo code at all. So we have this save my location button outside of the iframe and we have 
the plugin that allows us to search for a location and save it. So the next thing we want to do is figure out how to let the iframe know that the user has clicked on a button in our page code. First, you want to add a click event to your code. When the Save My Location button is clicked, you want to send a message to the iframe. To do that, you used post message. We're going to define in that message that click equals true. You don't have to do this. We are doing it in this case because later in this demo, we're going to be sending another message. And in the iframe, we need to be able to understand which post message was fired. So in this case, we're going to send an object that says that a, the button was clicked by creating an object that has click is true. So now we're sending that message. We need to write some code to receive the message. Back in your code editor, you're going to have to add a few more lines to be able to receive the message from that click event. So window on message will allow us to listen for that event. Once the event comes in, in our case, we want to check and see if what event this is. So on event data, we're looking for click, which is the property we defined. And we're going to make sure that that equals true. If it equals true, then we need to get this new center of the map to get that updated latitude and longitude for the city the user chose, in my case being Baltimore. To send the data back to the page code, we're going to use window parent post message. Now, when you're sending data to the page code, you want to know where it's coming from. You want to know that it's coming from this iframe and not some other website. So there is a little security um, attribute that you need to be aware of when using post message to send this message to your page code. The first part of post message is telling it what data that you're sending. In our case, we're using map.getCenter which is available from leaflet and that gets the new center coordinates of the map wherever the map is at that moment. The second attribute that we're adding is the URL of your site. This is the only valid place that you're willing to accept messages from in your page code. Now that we have this little snippet, you're going to want to grab all this code again and paste it fresh into your HTML element. You can right click to select all and just delete this and paste in fresh. And we're going to update that now. There's one more thing we have to do so that we get the code or sorry, get the new latitude and longitude back in the page code. In your page code, we have to listen for the event that the iframe is sending now. So similar to listening for the click event in the iframe, now we need to listen for the data that is returned from the iframe. So the Velo API for the HTML element gives you an on message handler that you can listen for this event. When the event comes back, we are going to create a variable to set to the event data so that we can use it. And then in our case of this example, this is where you could say actually you know, shoot off a backend function to save this code to the user that's currently logged in. Um, you could really do whatever you wanted with this data. For the purpose of this example, we're just going to display it on the screen. So to do that, we're going to grab that text element and populate it with the variables that came back in a little message to the user. We also need to show. Back on the front end, let's refresh real quick. We're starting out in London. I want to go to Baltimore. That's where I want my map to be. Click on Baltimore. We're now there. And I'd like you to save that location. And this is the latitude and longitude for the center of Baltimore. Now, as you can see, you have that value in your page code and available to you. This is pretty exciting because that means you can use data received from the iframe in any way that you want. There is one final thing that you should consider. If you're going to be saving this data into any collection, you would always want to do another data validation just for another layer of security. In this case, 
I should only ever be receiving latitude and longitude values. So it's a very specific thing that I'm receiving. There should never be any text or script tags. The numbers should be formatted in a very particular way. And if I were to be saving these, we would want to add validation to make sure that these numbers came back in a way that was expected before we saved them into our data collections. Back in the editor, there's one other thing I want to show you. I have another example ready to go where we're going to actually tell the map where we want it to start. We're going to override that default latitude and longitude that I added in that leaflet code in the, minute, in the beginning. Let's start with the latitude of Baltimore. This means that should I have these values already, I can send them to the iframe and tell it I don't want to start in London, I don't want to start on the default, I want you to override that and start on the Baltimore latitude and longitude. For this I need to send another message to the iframe. We're going to create another object, send through post message, and this time I want to send the latitude and the longitude. Now that I'm sending this, but I also sometimes am sending a click, we need to adjust our iframe code once more to know which post message event has come through and what to do once it receives it. Back in your code editor, we're going to need to extend this function. So let's start by adding an if statement for if event data latitude and event data longitude. If the event data has a latitude and a longitude, then what we want to happen is set the view of the map to the event data lat and the longitude. So this is what we want to do if we have latitude and longitude coming in an event. Else, if the event that came back is that initial click event we made, we want to send that map center. Take this code, copy it in the editor. Let's get rid of all this code again. So now, notice the default is still there in our preview in the city of London. But when we go ahead and publish this, and we go to the front end, we should see the city of Baltimore on load. Let's take a look at the front end and it's already loaded with Baltimore right in my view. I hope that shows you how simple it is to set up an iframe element and send data back and forth between your page and the iframe. The two main takeaways here are to make sure to consider security when sending messages from the iframe to your page code. You should always know exactly where those messages are coming from. And finally, if you're going to save this data because it is essentially coming from an external source, you also would want to then again validate the data that it's exactly what you expected to receive.